I um, keep it to just these foods, Tailwind Nutrition, Honey Stinger Waffles and Chews, and Mashed Potatoes. And <laughs> that's it. Um, which And Mashed Potatoes is the big sponsor, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Lumen Metabolism Tracker, the first device to track your metabolism and provide daily personalized nutrition plans for peak performance. Visit lumen.me to order and use the code SPARTAN50 for $50 off. Well, I'm here with Courtney DeWalter again. We had her on uh, recently where we talked about the difference between a normal distance and a long distance. And the funny thing about that conversation was, you know, for her, a normal distance is 100 and a long distance is 270 miles. Uh, but we were able to draw out a lot of great advice for somebody, even if their normal distance is 5k and they're going up to 10k. Um, so, but Courtney, when we talk about these long, long distances, um, I touched on this before about that you've become really well known because you're winning long races outright. And when I say outright, I don't mean that, you know, you're the top woman, which is a massive accomplishment anyway, but you're the first person across the line of any gender. So tell me a little bit about the first race where that happened and the reaction that you got, um, you know, when you came across the finish line ahead of all the men. <laughs> I honestly can't tell you the first one it happened at. Um, I think for me, it like I want to compete when I do a race and, and I want to give my very best and I want to come across the finish line absolutely like smashed with, you know, there's nothing left in my body or my brain to give that day. Um, but I'm just chasing people or I'm chasing myself. Like, um, I might be searching for the next human out on the course. I don't care if it's a man or a woman. I want to try and find them and I want to try and pass them because that keeps me pushing forward. And um, if that isn't doable, like if they're too far away or there's no one ch to chase anymore, then I, I think I um, just like to keep the foot on the gas no matter yeah. what and, and not let up on it. So um, when I'm racing, yeah, I don't care if I'm the first overall or if I'm in last place, if, you know, I crossed and gave it everything I had and that's how it shook out that day. That's just how it was. I think it also is a little bit um, to do with how I was raised. I have two brothers and um, often I was put on the same sports teams as them because it made it easier to, you know, get us all the practices and games and stuff. Sure. Um, and my parents never taught me that I was like, incapable of something of my brothers just because I was the girl in the family and yep. so it's always just been like you try your very best and you go toe to toe with whoever you're competing against because that's how you compete so that that's fun that it, it was never a big deal to you you weren't out there trying to beat the man when you came across the line that wasn't in your mind even other people made a big deal out of it well, <laughs> <laughs> so that that's great and and also the idea about um that it's more important to you to be the best that you can be out there. You know, if, if that turns out on that day that that's also the best that anyone did, that's great. But it's more important to you that you've run your best race, no matter how it finishes, than, uh, than, than your, your finishing place, even if you use that as motivation to keep moving you forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's about um, really just keeping that foot on the gas as hard as possible the whole time. So even if I'm leading, I don't want to like let up on that and just be like, well, I'm okay with however this plays out now because I'm leading the race. Like, I want to just go as hard as possible all the way to the line. So, so that brings me to my specific question for today, which is fueling and, and, and your approach to fueling so that you can do that. Because when you're running these long, long distances, and, and a lot of our viewers and listeners are people who are trying to step up to these longer distances. So whatever's long for them, they want to go longer. And you, you've gone long enough that it's ahead of most of these people so they can, they can use you as an example. So your approach to nutrition, your approach to taking in the fuel that you need so that you can stay on the gas. Um, give me um, sort of a, an overview of that, and then we'll dive into some of the, uh, the, the particulars. So what, what is your approach to nutrition for ultra races? Yep, I currently have it nailed down to a very small group of nutrition that I'll use during my, all of my races. So I um, keep it to just these foods, Tailwind Nutrition, Honey Stinger Waffles and Chews, and Mashed Potatoes. And <laughs> that's it. 
um, which and mashed potatoes is the big sponsor, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the potato lobby is well behind you on this one. Yeah, <laughs> but it took a lot of trial and error. I think all of us are different in what works and how our bodies, you know, take in different nutrition or what sounds appealing, even yep. during a run. And so it was years of trial and error, and um, just anything that anyone else tried, I would try just to yep. see how it sat with me and. And then I would either rule it out or rule it in and move forward from there. And so, um, yeah, there were a lot of mistakes made along the way. But now that I have it kind of zeroed in on this grouping, I just keep it at that because I think simplicity and not thinking about mm -hmm. that part of it is very helpful during a run. So, so the idea about uh, trial and error, I think is, is great because somebody may tell you this is exactly what works for me and you try and it doesn't work for you. So even, even though you're going to give us some specifics on that, it's, it's not gospel for everyone that for somebody else, it may work differently. Um, and, uh, and there are some disasters, right? When you, when, when you try something that you haven't tried before, and that's actually one bit of advice I was given a while ago is, um, experiment on your training runs not on your races uh, <laughs> right because it's it's much it's much easier to come back with uh with a messy stomach or messy other end if i uh, if uh if you're not in the middle of a race yeah but um yeah <laughs> but so, so so in terms of we won't get into the 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 the, the gory details on, on the trials and the errors but tell me a little bit about now like like so when you said it it's tailwind nutrition it's uh honey stinger waffles and it's uh potatoes what are you getting from each of those three components and how are you taking it in sort of, is it the same amount at every aid station? Is it, you know, you take different parts, different parts in the race. Tell me about how, how it specifically works. Yeah, because my races are longer, I'll be wearing a hydration vest. And yep. so I'm carrying these things with me all the time. So yep. how I take it in during my longer races is um, basically like an IV, a slow drip IV of calories, coming in. So just tiny sips of the liquids, the tailwind nutrition, and then um, every once in a while, you know, a bite of waffle or a chew or a little sip of mashed potatoes. Yep. Um, so I don't have it on like a timer or anything, and I don't restrict myself to only at aid stations. For me, it works best to just take in really tiny amounts all the time, which sometimes is, it feels like all you're doing is eating, but Sure. It helps. <laughs> yeah. um, and as far as what they provide for me, uh, the Tailwind is a powder that goes in your water. And so you're getting your hydration. It also has calories in it and salt. And then it's simple sugars. Um, yep. In the Honey Stinger, it's more simple sugars, but giving a little bit of food for me because I get hungry out there. Yep. And so um, fulfilling, you know, that desire to like chew on something sometimes. And then the mashed potatoes are the complex carbohydrates. Like the slow burn I found is really helpful for the really long events. Yeah. And, and it is funny when you talk about the sugars and the carbohydrates and things like that. And I know there's so many diets right now in terms of just, just somebody's day-to-day -day diet where they're trying to cut down on the carbs and whatnot. But when you're running a distance like that and your, your engine is burning so hot for so long, um, that really is what fuels it, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, for me, I don't pay attention to cutting out any certain food groups and all of it ends up being fuel in my head. Yep. Um, yep. And so these are the fuels that I found that keep my stomach happy and keep me running for a while. And, and what do you do? So you're running, say, a two-day event and um, it's three o'clock in the morning and you know that you need to take in some nutrition and you just don't feel like it. Is that just mind over matter managing saying, Courtney, get this in? Kind of. Um, it's experience reminding you that you feel so much better when you have calories in you yep. and um, it's also sometimes like sneak attacking the calories in like tailwind's a great way because you get thirsty anyways and so in a 500 milliliter bottle i'm getting 200 calories out of that yep. that's pretty awesome um or i'll like uh eat take something in like mashed potatoes and then drink some water with it and just swallow it down so your like mouth isn't even processing that you just had solid food. Um, yeah, sure. So it's, yeah, it's playing games with yourself or um, just trying to be as logical as possible with it. And like, how much better do you feel when you actually have gas in the tank? And, and I, I find it interesting that you've found, like you say, a very, very simple 
process to get that in. You know, I, I have friends that, that I race with who they'll have their one o'clock little bag of tablets and by tablets I mean sodium and potassium and things like that. And they'll have a different one at four o'clock and they'll have, and it just, it, it seems like so much to manage. Um, I've been guilty of taking the opposite approach where um, I uh, really need Snickers to sponsor me because I've eaten more Snickers bars than anyone I know. <laughs> I also am not winning races. So that might be part of the problem. But, um, but I, I love that, that you found something that there's a science to it. You're getting the things you need and you have a formula that works, but you haven't overcomplicated it with, um, with needing to have 14 different drop boxes with 14 different things in them. Yeah, for me, it just took out a lot of the thinking to narrow it down to just these three things. Um, yep. And then when I roll through an aid station or I need to refill my pack with more stuff, it's not, you know, like, waffling about which thing I should grab or do I feel like pickles or Fritos? It's just, here are the things that I stick with. And then, um, yeah, I don't get sick of them, which I think is important. And they fuel me through multiple days of running. So yeah, that's all I need. <laughs> oh, well, it sounds like really, really good advice. Good advice to me. It's funny on our, on our last conversation, you said, I don't know that I'm in any position to give anyone advice, not being a, a professional, but uh, I would say I'm going to take all your advice because the results <laughs> that you're getting are off the charts. And, uh, and uh, if tailwinds and uh, honey stingers and some mashed potatoes are going to get me there faster than my Snickers, I'll work some of those into, <laughs> into my diet and still go as I don't know. Snickers sounds like a good route too. If it works for you, it's the perfect nutrition. Yeah, that, that's a really, really good summary. If it works for you, it's the perfect nutrition. So for anyone listening, um, don't be afraid to find out what works for you. Um, do it while you're training. And then once you find out what works for you, keep it simple. Is that a good, uh, good way to put that? Yeah, that's perfect. Awesome. Hey, Courtney, I look very forward to when the world opens up again and uh, we Canadians can be down there racing with you Americans and vice versa and, uh, and crossing paths in real time and space. Uh, but in the meantime, um, thanks so much for being on the Spartan Up podcast, for bringing this uh, great information to everyone who's finding what their endurance limit is and then going past it just like you are. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Lumen Metabolism Tracker, the first device to track your metabolism and provide daily personalized nutrition plans for peak performance. Visit lumen.me to order and use the code SPARTAN50 for $50 off.